Uh, Jill, tell me about your most memorable guest. Who was it? Well, you know, we, we've had so many inspirational guests over the years, and I guess the ones that really stick with me the most are the ones that make me think about how important it is to live big yeah. all the time. And um, Dan Eldon was a 22-year-old um, photojournalist, right, starting his career, but he'd already, already had some great success. Um, and he was killed on assignment in Mogadishu in Somalia. And um, his sister and mom told us his story. Dan was my brother, but he was also my best friend. At 21, Dan was working for Reuters in Somalia, and his photographs were making uh, center spreads of Newsweek and Time magazine. For Dan, life was this incredible adventure. My son Dan was following his purpose. He was living the life of his choice no matter what. He was somebody that was compelled by both passion and compassion. On July 12, 1993, there was a terrible bombing by UN forces. There were women and children and 60 people were killed or injured. The people were so angry that they picked up pipes and, and st stones and started to stone the journalists. Dan started to run and someone from behind hit him with a very big stone and he went straight down. And at that point, I like to think that his spirit just took off, just soared. He left behind 17 journals with 250 pages in most of them, and they were flung in the back of the Land Rover and schlepped their way across the world. I don't know where that energy came from, because it's not as though he didn't live the rest of his life fully. Dan really was never happy with his photography, so he would layer the, the, the photographs. The last journal was just about Somalia. He said he couldn't bear to touch those images. There's no artwork around the edges, there's just the stark reality of the tragedy of Somalia. A year after Dan was killed, I started thinking, I'm losing him, you know, I can't remember exactly the way he laughed or the way, you know, his fingers looked. Or... And I called my mother and I said, you know, I'm, I'm losing this guy. And she said, well, I know, make an album of memories and pictures and quotes so, you know, you'll be reminded of him. And, and so I put together this angel catcher, um, which now we've published, um, which we hope will help other people not only capture the essence of the person they've loved, but also help them go through the grieving process. I believe that his death has a, a lesson for all of us. I think Dan confronted fear in his journals over and over and over again about what he's meant to be doing in life. Does he have the strength and the courage to do it? And it's almost like he knew that he didn't have much time here because he had to really pack it all in. Every time I look through his journals, um, it pulls into sharper focus what I have to do with my life. I like that, about packing it all in. I think that's something. Yeah. And how long did you work on that piece? You know, it was one of those stories that as soon as we heard about it and talked to Amy and Kathy, we knew it was a great one and knew we wanted to bring it to the, to the show. When we come back, everybody on my whole staff would claim this 11-year-old girl as an Oprah Show Hall of Fame moment. You'll see what we mean next. Good job, Jerry. <laughs>